Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the first video of this entire series that will be dedicated to Exchange Server 2019. We will start this series by understanding the basics of Active Directory. We will understand why Active Directory is required for Exchange Server. Then we will install Active Directory and we will deploy a domain controller. We will discuss DNS in detail because this is the most important concept in Active Directory and in Exchange Server. Then we will discuss the architecture of Exchange Server. We will install Exchange Server 2019. We will install SSL certificate on Exchange Server. We will see how to manage recipients in Exchange Server. We will understand the mail flow in Exchange, how connectors work. We will deploy Edge Transport Server. We will talk about database availability groups, and then we will move towards Exchange Hybrid. We will talk about HCW, how to migrate mailboxes, and much more. We will start the first session of this series by understanding why Active Directory is required for Exchange Server. We will also talk about few terms like domain controller, global catalog server, and we will also talk about domains, trees, and forest. Because when we will be installing Active Directory or we will be setting up a domain controller, we will come across all these terms. Before we understand Active Directory, let's understand how things work without Active Directory. Without an Active Directory, every computer on the network has its own database where username and password is stored. We call these type of computers as a work group. If a user wants to log into a workgroup machine, an administrator will have to create a user account for that user in that particular machine. But if he wants to access a different workgroup machine, he will not be able to use his credentials because his credentials are stored in a different machine database. Now the administrator will have to create another user account for this machine as well. Now let's say this user changed his password on this machine. When he will log into the other machine with the same password, he will not be able to get access to that machine because his credentials are stored within a different computer database and that cannot be replicated to the other computers. If an administrator will have to apply certain policies on these machines, he will have to do it one by one because these machines cannot be managed from a centralized place. And if an organization has 100 computers or let's say more than 100 computers, then managing all the computers one by one is not an easy task. So by deploying Active Directory, we can join all the computers with the same domain network. We can easily manage all the computers and resources from one centralized place. Active Directory is a Windows Server role that authenticates and authorizes the users and computers. When we talk about authentication, this is a process to validate the identity of the user. And authorization is what resources a user can access post successful authentication. We can also say that Active Directory is a centralized database from where you can manage the objects. When I say objects, these are users, groups, computers, and contexts. All these are called objects in Active Directory. Active Directory stores group policies. By using group policies, we can make centralized changes to the computers. Now, what is a domain controller? A domain controller is a server or a machine on which we install Active Directory role. Domain controller authenticates the users and computers. It stores the information of the user accounts or the objects, and it enforces the security policies within a domain. The primary responsibility of the domain controller is to authenticate and validate user access on the network. A domain is a logical group or a collection of objects. For example, users, groups, or computers. All these objects are represented with this domain name. A tree is a collection of domains. For example, I have a domain office365concepts.com. I can create objects in this domain. 
Now let's assume this is a big organization and we have child domains for each department of the organization. For example, sales and IT. So we have two child domains, sales.office365concepts.com and it.office365concepts.com. In a tree, child domains share the same namespace. In this example, sales and IT are sharing the same namespace that is office365concepts.com. So office365concepts.com is a parent domain and sales.office365concepts.com and it.office365concepts.com are the child domains. And the collection of these domains is called a tree. A forest is a collection of trees. Let's assume we have a domain office365concepts.com and we have a child domain that is sales.office365concepts.com. So this forms a tree. Now let's assume this organization has one more domain and that is o365techlabs.com. This is the same organization and this domain has a child domain as well and that is hr.o365techlabs.com. So this again forms a tree and the collection of these trees is called forest. Both the domains or trees have a trust between them. That means the users from one domain can access the resources of another domain. This trust is created automatically or in some scenarios we can create it manually as well. A global catalog server stores a partial list of attributes for domains in the forest. Each domain in Active Directory Forest has its own copy of Active Directory database and changes are replicated to each domain controller within that domain. If you want to access a resource that is located within the same domain, you can easily locate it and you can access it. But what if we want to access a resource that is located in a different domain? Or what if we do not know that where is the resource located that we want to access? Because a domain has the information of the resources, those are located only within that domain. It doesn't know about the resources, those are located in the different domain. A global catalog server acts like an index for the forest. When we create objects in Active Directory, they contain n number of attributes. Global catalog server contains information about the objects in the Active Directory forest. It doesn't contain all the attributes of the objects, but it contains the partial attributes. Those are enough to find out an object. So now let's understand why Active Directory is required for Exchange Server. The Active Directory database stores the information in three types of logical partitions, schema partition, configuration partition, and domain partition. The schema partition stores two types of information, schema classes and schema attributes. Schema classes defines all the types of objects that can be created and stored in Active Directory. And schema attribute defines the properties that can be used for the objects. Those are stored within the Active Directory. The configuration partition stores the information about the forest wide configuration. It includes the configuration of Active Directory sites, Exchange Global settings, transport settings and mailbox policies. And the domain partition stores the information in default containers and in the organizational units. Those are created by the Active Directory administrator. This information includes exchange system objects and the information about the computers, users and groups within that particular domain. In order to access the information that is stored in Active Directory, Exchange uses Active Directory API. This service reads the information from all the partitions of Active Directory. Exchange is an Active Directory site aware application. It prefers to communicate with the directory servers. Those are located within the same site so that the Exchange server can optimize the network traffic. And each exchange server must communicate with Active Directory to retrieve information about the recipients 
and the information about other exchange servers within the site. So in order to use exchange server services, the domain controller has to be up and running. If domain controller is down, exchange will not be able to collect the required information and the users will not be able to authenticate themselves and they will not be able to use the exchange services. So that is why Active Directory is required in your organization if you are planning to deploy an exchange server. In the next video, I will be demonstrating you how to set up a domain controller. So that is all for now. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.